On this channel, I have said time and time again that hydrogen is the future, and more specifically, hydrogen internal combustion engines are the future of tuning and hot rodding. You see, people like me love working on their cars, fiddling with the engine and making the cars unique and powerful. You start this love-hate relationship with your car, and it's beautiful. Sometimes you swear at it because of how dumb the design is, or you drop a bolt into the infinite void of the engine, and at that moment, you hate the car, and you want to burn it. But then a few hours later, when it works again, you love it, and you get this feeling of satisfaction and joy, because you did that. And then you get the petrol heads that love to modify and tune the car, but they would rather if somebody else did the job for them. They love their cars just as much, and when they get their cars back from the tuning shops, their cars are an extension of their personality. You see, tuning or hot rodding is an important part of the car community, and if everything goes electric, we will lose that whole industry. And on top of that, tons of people will lose their jobs. Luckily for us, there are many people out there that believe in the same future we do, where the hydrogen internal combustion engine coexists with the fuel cell EVs and electric cars alike. Engine guru Mike Copeland believes that the hydrogen internal combustion engine is the future and that it could save the roar of racing. And he put his money where his mouth's at and he built his own hydrogen internal combustion powered hot rod. Now Copeland says, hydrogen offers the classic chicken and egg problem. There is no demand because there is no infrastructure and vice versa. Which is pretty much the same thing Top Gear said, saying, hydrogen production has lagged because there is no demand. And the demand has lagged because there is no infrastructure. And the infrastructure has lagged because there hasn't been an uptick in either demand or supply. But I feel like all of that is changing. Governments are investing billions in hydrogen plants and the technology in general, and companies are doing the same. Hydrogen is a $260 billion industry, and according to the smart math people that do the market shares and stuff, it should keep growing. Anyways, back to Copeland and his truck. During a SEMA webinar on the 23rd of February, Copeland commented on the possibility for governments completely banning gasoline sales in certain countries. And it's not such an impossible thought. Europe already said that they will ban the sales of new gasoline or diesel powered vehicles after 2030. And that's a scary thought. That means that the tuning scene, racing and motorbiking scene, everything will die out or drastically change. And all the jobs associated with it will also go out with it. So how can we prevent all of that from happening? Well, easy, with the help of hydrogen. You keep the internal combustion engine alive and just replace the gasoline with hydrogen. According to Copeland, with numerous modifications, engineering and the right software, hydrogen can fuel a combustion engine and offer performance similar to what the traditional internal combustion engine will offer. Copeland's goal is to produce a kit that anyone can use to switch from gasoline to hydrogen. So he started to see if this would be possible with his own 1948 Chevy pickup, which now does run on hydrogen. Copeland, with the help of Bosch, converted the 74-year-old classic into a modern-day hydrogen-powered piece of engineering. And this was no easy task. Copeland explained that a typical internal combustion engine runs at 14.7 to 1 stoichiometric air-fuel ratio, but hydrogen is completely different, like I explained in a previous video. For the complete combustion of hydrogen in air, your stoichiometric air fuel ratio would need to be at least 34 to 1. And Copeland said that he is running his truck at 75 to 1 and even leaner, stating the engine can run very lean without detonation. Now Copeland didn't want to go super into detail on how everything in his truck works since he wants to scale it up for mass production so that other builders can use it too. So he doesn't want to like spill the beans and then not be able to make sales. Now back to his truck. This truck is powered by a 6.2 liter LS motor, but obviously the motor isn't a stock 6.2 liter V8. It has a lot of new internals, larger than stock Wiseco pistons for better cooling, that is paired by shorter K1 conrods and a crank. The pistons have specific rings from Total Seal, with gaps about the same as you'll find in a boosted or nitrous engine. Then he paired that engine with a Magnuson 2650 supercharger and a 5-speed transmission. And according to Copeland, this setup should easily make 500 horsepower. All of this is great. 
the more I see other people chasing the technology, the happier I get. Guys, we will have a future with V8s racing down the drag strip, F1 cars that scream through the gears and drift cars that have turbo noises and massive V8s. The future looks bright and I'm excited. Now all the countries just need to play nice with each other and then I'll be happy. But let me know down below what you think of this dude, his car and the technology in general. And the idea of having conversion kits for all the cars. I think it's very smart. I just don't know how easy it will be to implement and I don't know how cheap it would be to buy the kit itself and then install it. But let me know what you think of the whole idea and if you enjoyed this video leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you did like this video you'll like a lot of other videos on my channel so just go through it see if there's something else you like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers eh?